Do not stare directly into that eclipse, but feel free to stare at your team's good start. You are locked on MLB. Your daily MLB podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Hello, baseball fans. Welcome to Locked On MLB, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. This is the daily podcast. We talk about all the Major League Baseball. I am your host, Paul Francis Sullivan. Please call me Sully. I have been a podcaster for baseball for well over a decade now, and I've done a lot of some, some stuff on TV, some stuff written, some stuff on camera, behind the camera. I've done a lot of stuff, but the thing I really love doing is talking baseball here. And this is my sixth season here, the start of my sixth season here the Lockdown Podcast Network, where it is indeed your team every day. Follow us at Lockdown MLB Pods on Twitter, or whatever it's called now, and on Instagram. I'm your pal, Sully. at Sully Baseball on Twitter, Sully Baseball Podcast on Instagram. And if you're listening every day and you leave a message on one of our social media sites, make sure to have that hashtag every day, Sully. It lets us know who's out there, who's following us, and who's out there hearing our sponsors. For example, today's show is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time map, create an account, and use code Locked On MLB for twenty dollars off of your first purchase. Let's get down to some business here before we get going on what I want to talk about, which is the fact that we are ten game, roughly ten games. Some teams have a little bit more, some teams have a little bit less, but we're right around ten games into the season, which is way too early to make any real negative assessment, but it's not entirely impossible to feel a little apprehensive about your team at this point. And I have gone through, because I'm me, I've gone through and I have created three categories of which every team in baseball currently falls under if you're a fan of them. We'll get to that in just a second. First of all, uh, this is being dropped on the eighth day. The day of the eclipse, wear your sunglasses. Don't stare right at it like some people might do out there. Uh, but let's see who owned baseball for the seventh day of April 2024, which was Sunday. Let's figure out who owned baseball for the seventh day of April 2024. Ronel Blanco finally let up a hit, but he still hasn't let up a run this year as Houston beat Texas and Blanco's their new ace in Space City. William Contreras got 10 total bases with his two homers. Milwaukee pounded Seattle 12 to 4. Zach Geloff of the A's got four hits, and the A's stunned the Tigers with a 7 to 1 drubbing. And Max Mayer got the first Marlins win of the year, beating the St. Louis Cardinals 10 to 3. Half Wobs went to Ryan Mountcastle and Dean Kremer, who were terrific for Baltimore, but the Orioles' bullpen melted down at Pittsburgh. Nolan Gorman homered twice in the Cardinals' 10-3 loss to Miami. And knuckleballer Matt Waldron pitched terrific in the sixth inning, but the Padres lost the game to the Giants. They all owned baseball on April 7th, 2024. And so I've broken down the teams in baseball into three different categories. And you'll note that there's not a fourth. And I'll tell you what the categories are. The first is feeling good. If you come out of the gate, especially if there's been some uh, consternation about your how the team is going to turn out, some apprehension, they're a little bit on the fence. If you come out of the gate fat, you come out of the gate looking good, that's fantastic because at least you know you have something to build on and maybe you could build on that confidence and at least there'll be something fun if you're saying, hey, I wasn't sure we're going to be. At least we're starting off well. That's a good start. Those are games you don't have to win later. Then there's a category which I'm calling don't panic, it's early. Now, these are teams, some teams have gotten out of the gate slowly. Some teams have had to absorb some injuries. And some teams just, quite frankly, had they had high expectations. They don't look really good right now. And there's one specific team in there. If they didn't have a surprise ace show up, they would look downright bad, at least in terms of the win-loss record, which in the end is the only way we can judge a team. Now, these are teams that, you know, okay, you didn't get off to the best start. We're only 10 games in. 
We haven't even turned our tax in. Don't worry. Don't panic. And then there's a small group of teams that I call, uh-oh. These are teams that did not have a big expectation for them. And boy, they're showing why. And when you have no expectations going into the season and you stumble badly out of the gate, that's when you start looking and going, oh, no, is it going to be one of those kind of years? And sometimes teams with low expectations stumble out of the gate, get a big burst of energy. And suddenly they go, some of those teams have gone on to win. Sometimes it was an unlikely situation like the 2012 A's. Look at them. They were a team that was strip mined of some of their top players, and they went on to win the division on the last day of the season. They got off the gate really, really badly. Sometimes it's a situation where, you know what, we just got to get rid of this manager. And a team that stumbled out of the gate wound up doing very well. I'm looking at you, 2003 World Series champion. Florida Marlins. They were Florida back then. But these are teams that had low expectations and quite frankly, they're showing why. There's one, there's two teams under Don't Panic who are almost in the uh uh-oh category, but I'm not quite putting them there yet. Now you'll notice there's not a fourth category. The fourth category is Don't Get Crazy. What that means is that sometimes a team flies out of the gate looking terrific. I'm looking at you, uh, the 2009 Kansas City Royals. I bet you forgot the fact that that team got out of the gate looking tremendous, and they fell far short of their expectations that year. Last year, the Pittsburgh Pirates and the New York Mets were playoff teams right around Memorial Day. We saw their years did not end particularly well. But I am not the fun police. I am not someone saying, hey, don't have fun. If your only good month is April, have fun. This might be the only, for some of these teams that got off the fast starts, this might be the only good time of your whole season. So don't have someone saying, who cares? It's early. Hey, it's early. But look at the standings. We're in first place. You haven't even played 12 games yet. Who cares? For some fan bases, this is going to be the lone fun time of a very long season. Don't tell people who are enjoying themselves to not enjoy themselves. If some team got off to a great start, if you meet someone from Pittsburgh who's already planning their parade route for a World Series title and are playing We Are Family and say this is the greatest pirate team since 1979, let them. Don't be the fun police. Now, we're going to break these down when we come back from our segment. But I want to sort of let you know what we're what we're getting into here. And I'm also going to go through and tell you who got the trivia question right. Because we talked a little bit about Henry Aaron passing Babe Ruth. I asked, who did Babe Ruth pass? Who was the home run king that Babe Ruth passed? And Roger Molina, uh, Albert the Conjugator, and a couple other people got it completely right. And it was Connecticut owns a uh, 18th century 18th century Hall of Famer, Connecticut's own Roger Connor. That's right. Roger Connor was the home run king that Babe Ruth passed. And he had his, uh, go to baseballreference.com, single website, the history of planet Earth. He picked up... Uh, he hit 200 and I'm sorry, 138 home runs, 138 home runs between 1880 and 1897. And he is in the hall of fame born and died in Waterbury, Connecticut. And he was the home run King. And I'm sure there weren't a lot of people saying, Oh, I don't acknowledge Babe Ruth as a home run King. It will always be Roger Connor. However, as a native of Connecticut, I can tell you, knowing what I know about some of the people of New England, I bet there's at least one person there who is thinking, yeah, it will always be Roger Connor. No matter what your sport is, this is the ideal time to be getting tickets and seeing games live. Let me tell you something. I just used Game Time, which is the best place to get your tickets 
and I got quality tickets for games at both Dodger Stadium and in Anaheim and in Oakland. May not be hard to get tickets in Oakland these days, but the ones I got were the best. Game Time is now an authorized ticket marketplace of Major League Baseball, which makes getting tickets so easy and so quick. And the prices on Game Time actually go down the closer it gets to first pitch. With killer last-minute deals, all-in prices, views from the seats, and the lowest price guaranteed, Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying Major League Baseball tickets. I went to go see the Red Sox and the Angels in Anaheim. Hot ticket. And if I just went to a normal site, who knows where I would have gotten. They would have put me somewhere. I would have been the wrong view, would have facing the wrong way. Sometimes the tickets are not the best. And sometimes the views aren't what you want. With game time, I got a great deal, and I was able to choose between a couple of different locations. I actually like to sit in the second deck and a little bit closer to the first base line. I like that angle that way. get to see this thing out there in left field. I went through game time, all the views, and I found the perfect seat. And I saw that it was near the aisle where I like to sit as well. You can get that specific. And the prices I got were fantastic. I used the zone deal because I said, I want to be in that section. They found the ideal seat for me. Got it. Boom. Play ball. Sox lost. What are you going to do? What you need to do is you need to take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time. For a limited time, all users get $20 off of any Major League Baseball purchase of $150 or more in the Game Time app with the code First Pitch. Terms apply. That's code F I R S T P I T C H for $20 off from March 25th to April 14th. Download the Game Time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest prices. Do you know what they are? They're guaranteed. Are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day? Have to turn down the volume with all the shouting? Make the switch to Locked On Sports today, a free 24-7 sports streaming channel program for you to bring the biggest stories without all the screaming. Locked On Sports today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news, streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV's channel app. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, what fan bases should be feeling really good right now? Well, let's get right to the some of the teams here. The Atlanta Brave fans should be feeling really, really good right now. Not only are their team off to a good start, they've won their last three games, but they're winning some weird games, like the one where they were down 6 nothing early to Arizona, and they came storming back to win that game. I don't think you need to worry, Braves fan. Your team is going to be just fine. Thank you very much. I'll tell you what other teams should be feeling really good right now. That's the Milwaukee Brewers. The Brewers lost their manager. The Brewers lost their ace. And they look up and they've won six of their first eight games. And they look like they're getting some quality innings out of some of their pitchers and getting some big hits from some of their batters. Is this going to last long? I don't know. But you can't ask for a this team to do better than a six and two record at this point, they should feel pretty good. Now, Cub fans, I almost put at the don't panic situation, but they won the other day and they're six and three. They've won six of their first nine games. I thought they looked like the only team that could possibly run away with that division. Maybe they still can, but they should feel good about a pretty decent start right there. The Dodgers. Remember how some people worried about the Dodgers? Hell, I said there was a, argument that they have the fourth best rotation in their own division and the season starts by splitting those two games in San Diego not in San Diego in Seoul against San Diego and if it wasn't for Cronenworth's glove falling apart and the single worst endorsement I've ever seen for athletic equipment in my life the Dodgers almost came back from Seoul 0-2 but they did come back with a big old scandal and no games being played so all anyone talked about was Otani this Otani that and before he played one game in Chavez Ravine wearing the blue Dodger uniform Shohei Otani was in the middle of a controversy how is this going to distract the Dodgers what was this going to do what are we going to do will society survive Evidently, it can because the Dodgers have won seven out of their last 10 games. And even with the loss uh, to Chicago uh, on you know, with a big rain delay on Sunday, they're still eight and four, which when you consider some of the stuff that's been going on and some of the injuries to their pitching staff, you can't ask for better than that. That's pretty dang good. Uh, the Guardians, the Guardians, 
the fans in Cleveland have been getting a, a weird one-two punch. They just lost Bieber for what looks like the rest of the season and probably deep into next year, too. They no longer have Frank Kona at the helm. They've had all sorts of injuries and all sorts of depletion to some of their players. And they got off to a you know an okay but not great you know winning you know go start the season three and two. Now they're on a four game winning streak. They're seven and two. That's right. They have the second best record in the American League right now. Is it early? Absolutely. Could still things fall apart? You bet. When I was saying, hey, it's okay to let a fan base say we're really good knowing it could fall apart any minute. I was specifically thinking about Cleveland fans. But as it stands, hey, with all this happening and all these disastrous things happening to the team, to win seven of your first nine games, do you want to feel good about that? Now, the team you should feel really good about is in Pittsburgh. With an 8-2 and two record, the best record currently in the American League, and uh, the National League, sorry, and tied with the Yankees for the best record overall, the Pirates are winning weird, fun games. They won a game on su- on Sunday where they were losing in the ninth. They loaded the bases. They you know, got an out, couldn't tie the game. And the Orioles shortstop made a spectacular play to start a game-ending double play to win the game for the Orioles. Instead, the shortstop threw the ball away and the tying and winning runs came in. So instead of it being a game-ending double play to win the game for Baltimore, it became a game-ending error to win the game for Pittsburgh. They've won a couple of games like that already where they had no business winning and they won it anyway. And this is a division where a game here or there is going to make the difference because there's no front runner. Raise that Jolly Roger and feel really good about things. I know things started out well for them last year. Let Pirate fans have a moment to cheer. Uh, The defending World Series champions, the Texas Rangers, they're not off to a great start, but as I'm looking right now, they're in first place. They've won six of the first nine games, and even having a couple of games like the brutal loss that happened on Sunday Night Baseball, ah. That's not bad. So feel good about things, Texas Rangers. You're starting off okay. Hey, as a native New Englander and lifelong Red Sox fan, I can tell you something. I would have asked a genie for starting the season seven and three. And when you consider the fact the Red Sox have had at least two games where they've had stupid losses, like the extra inning loss they had in Seattle or the error fest that happened on Saturday in Anaheim, The fact that they have two bonehead losses, but only three losses overall. Folks, did you think this team was going to go nine and one? No. Their pitching's been really good. Their hitting's been really good. And yes, they lost Trevor Story. But you know what? No one thought of Trevor Story as a linchpin of this team. I can't feel much better than going starting the season on a 10-game road trip out west and winning seven of them for a team that I had very little expectations for. Go you. Uh, the Kansas City Royals, I was initially going to put in the don't panic column, but with their four-game winning streak, they're climbing up the standings in that incredibly winnable division. Plus, they have the next superstar in Bobby Witt Jr. So, hey, good on you, Royals, and good on you for picking up Michael Waka. And another t- fan base that should be feeling good are the Detroit Tigers. Now, they did just drop two games to the Oakland A's. Never a good look. However. They were six and one going into that series, and they're my team to, uh, they're my pick to win the America League Central. So jumping out to a six and one starts a, not a bad way to do it. And we all know there is no front runner in that division. So starting off hot, you know what? Not a bad idea. And of course the Yankees. The minute they lost uh, Garrett Cole and saw that they were going to start the season with a gauntlet of playoff teams, do you know what? I Even the most optimistic Yankee fan must have thought, oh boy, this does not look good for us. This does not look good for us at all. And then they just kept winning. And it wasn't because Judge was carrying the team. He hasn't. It hasn't been because they've had dominant ace pitching, with the exception of Stroman, they haven't. The fact of the matter is they're winning games. They're finding ways to do it. Juan Soto looks like a Yankee, and if the Yankees are smart, and who knows, maybe they are. They should open up the bank and just ask, what will it take? But 
if I came up to every Yankee fan when they heard that Garrett Cole was going to miss the start of the season, knowing they're going to begin the year in Houston and Arizona and then playing Toronto, if you said, hey, would you take eight and two to start the season? If I asked a million Yankee fans that, do you know what I'd get? I'd get a million yeses. Hey, are you a fan of daily fantasy sports? Well, you need to go to Prize Picks. Prize Picks is the number one fantasy sports app with more than 3 million members. It's the easiest and most exciting way to get in on the action while you watch your favorite sports and players. You just pick more than or less than or two or more player stats, and you watch the winnings roll in. Get the regular season has begun in baseball, and we're starting to see some cool stats running up. Don't miss out your chance to get your favorite players with a diamond with your prize picks entries, whether it's strikeouts, RBI, first inning runs. Take your pick in the more than or less than from prize picks today. And by the way, prize picks now offers Apple Pay for quick and easy deposits into your account for this baseball season. Now, let's see what we got. I got it right here. We got my app. No more than for O'Neill Cruz. And ooh, I have a feeling. I have a feeling about Eugenio Suarez. I'm going to go more than for him as well. Download the app today and use code Locked On MLB for a first deposit match up to $100. That's right. Download the app today and use code Locked On MLB for a first deposit match up to $100. Prize picks. Pick more. Pick less. Do you know what? It's that easy. Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. And now it's available on the Amazon Fire TV in the free Fire TV's channel app. Locked On Sports Day is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows like this one, covering every league. Find Locked On Sports Today, now available on the free Fire TV's channel app. Let's talk about some of the teams that I'm thinking, do you want? I know it's not a great start, but don't panic. Um, the Angels, uh, some games they look absolutely terrible. In fact, there are two games where Mike Trout's solo home runs were practically their only offense. They did not look very good the final game against the Red Sox. But they still have a winning record somehow. And somehow they've kept their nose a little bit above water, even though they don't look particularly good. So don't panic. Maybe things will start to kick in. When you have a winning record, when you don't look good, that's a good sign on the, the manager. Now, the Astros are not off to a good start. In fact, if Blanco didn't throw a pair of masterpieces, they would be 1-9 and nine right now. As it were, they looked terrible against the Yankees. And again, they have only one win that isn't a masterpiece by this unknown ace. They've lost seven of their first 10 games. And as of this recording, the Astros and the A's are tied. That's weird. That's very weird. But it's a very long season. We all know the Astros are incredibly talented. And this might just be one of those early hiccups. Uh, dropping seven to ten games, if that took place in August, no one would blink. Because it's how you start the year. It just looks a little more infected. Now, one team that is currently in the don't panic but is slowly edging towards panic are the Toronto Blue Jays. Their offense looks terrible. They don't look very good right now. Now, they haven't had everything click. And once everyone starts clicking that lineup, I do think they're a good team. I do think they're a playoff team. But I also, I, I don't know why Schneider is still the manager of the team. And if any manager is about to have the rug pulled from him, it's him. And right now, they're the only team in the American League East with a losing record. And if they start to fall far behind, do you know what? With their negative 17 run differential right now, it kind of sort of makes you worried about them. But hang on right now. The defending National League champion Arizona Diamondbacks have dropped their last four games. They're still very talented. They had a couple of fluke losses. When the pitching starts to click, they're going to do very well. The Cardinals... I don't know what to make of them. They've got lots of good veterans on the team, and they're off to a mediocre start, but that's the NL Central. One good winning streak by anyone could put them right in the driver's seat. Don't panic about that, and don't panic Giants. The Giants are off to a losing start right now, but their pitching's really good. Hicks has, has been a terrific addition. 
They had that tough series against Los Angeles. Things will start to fit in the right way. And next thing you know, the Rubik's Cube of the Giants will put them above 500. The Mariners have some of the best pitching in baseball, and yet you wouldn't know it the way Milwaukee beat them like a drum. Uh, they're still very talented and will turn things around. I do believe that. Same with Baltimore. Baltimore right now is – they had a couple of brutal losses to Pittsburgh. That's really what's keeping them from looking like they're having a dynamic start. Way too much talent on that team. Uh, a bounce here or there, this team would currently be 7-2 and two instead of 5-4. and four. Don't worry, Baltimore fans. This is not a lost year. San Diego has a lot of talent, and they're not off to a terrific start. All it takes is one good week. I'm not panicking about them yet, nor with Philadelphia. Philadelphia had some terrible bullpen issues, but they're going to make it. There's too much good things on that team. They'll just they'll have a couple of good weeks, and we'll forget about this rocky start. Uh, the Rays, similar. There looks like they're starting to turn things around, winning their last couple of games. They didn't look great initially, but I, I, again, this is Tampa, and you, we all know what they can do. Cincinnati is not off to a terrific start, but again, a lot of talent, way too early. Don't get worried about them. And the same thing with the Minnesota Twins, who look a little lackadaisical right now, but it's in the AL Central, so everyone could win that. So. Which teams should panic? Well, the A's, but they're not going to because the management doesn't care. And yes, they won those two games in Detroit. That's great. This is not a good team. And 100 losses is almost guaranteed. The Mets just don't look solid right now. And I'm begging the Mets to rebuild to not worry about this year. You're not going to win it this year. Bring your kids up. Trade veterans for kids. Rebuild, 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 rebuild. You could have the most loved team in New York in generations if you win with a homegrown team. You're not doing it this year, so don't pull the trigger. The Nationals, they don't look good either right now. And, you know, they did manage to win on Sunday, but do you know what? Again, there's not enough talent on that team to contend, and they're not off to a great start. The Rockies, oh boy, oh boy. I mean, the, they've dropped their last two games. I, I, you know, I feel like the manager of Bull Durham when I see that they're two and eight, and I say, how did they win two? This, they just don't look like a talented team, and this looks like an easy hundred loss season. The Marlins stunned me. The, I know the Marlins have some injuries, but. We were finding out that Kim Eng was not the problem with this team that, remember, made the playoffs last year, were a lot of fun last year, and they won on Sunday, so that means they're one and nine. This is, I talked to Peter Pratt from uh, Lockdown Marlins the other day. I'd so love to have you on to talk about the fish. He said, I'd rather not. For Miami fans, this is disastrous to come out of the gate trying to build off of a playoff season. Almost every time they've had success with that team, the next year they can't build off of it. They went to the playoffs last year. They were an exciting team last year with a lot of good young players, and they dropped their first nine games, and they look like garbage, save for the Sunday win. So I feel badly for them, but that's just the truth. And sadly, God, the White Sox. The White Sox have played nine games and already have a negative 26 run differential. I didn't think that was possible. They've won one game, and they just don't look in it. They've scored 16 runs in nine games total. And this was a team that just a couple of years ago was a, looked like it was going to be a perennial playoff team. And I thought, well, if they get out of the gate fast, oh, boy. And that's kind of the reason why I say this is a team that you should just say uh-oh about because there were no expectations for this White Sox team and holy cow, do they look terrible. Now, is it worth firing a manager? No, because we knew it was a rebuilding year. But man, this is going to be rough. And with empty seats and the city of Nashville beckoning to them, support your team, support your team, White Sox fans. Look what happened in Oakland. So there you go. If you disagree with the team, where which team should fall into, I think that the uh, Blue Jays uh, are kind of teetering 
on the edge of don't panic to panic. Well, that's going to depend on how the rest of this month goes. So let me know where you think about where I put your team. And let's start the trivia question right now. And the trivia question is, what is the only team in the 20th and 21st century to go on a 20-game win streak during the regular season and go on to play in the World Series. We've seen 20-game winning streaks with the A's in the Moneyball season and Cleveland in 2017, but neither of those teams made it to the World Series. Only one team had a 20-game winning streak and wound up winning the pennant. That is your trivia question. So follow us at Lockdown MLB Pods on Twitter and Instagram. I'm your pal Sully. I'm at Sully Baseball on Twitter, Sully Baseball Podcast on Instagram. Doing a way too early evaluation of baseball. This has been Locked On MLB for the eighth day of May 2024. I am your host, Paul Francis Sullivan. Please call me Sully and don't look directly into the eclipse.